Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian. And I'm Ethan. And today we have another Brawl Machine video coming for you. This is a fun new-ish format for War Machine where you play 25 points with a 15-point sideboard. There's some uh, changed or altered scenarios, and the rules for it are going to be in the description below. I think credit goes to Line of Sight for working up the rules for this. We've been having a lot of fun engaging with it, and we hope you enjoy watching this one. So I'm playing Midas this week in Thornfall because I wanted to try and see out if like one of those one of those casters that kind of just doesn't play that well or doesn't see that much play at 75 points. I wanted to see if Midas could pull his weight at 25 points and just try to see if Brawl Machine is something he could do well at. Uh, so my battle group is a Warhog, Gunbore, and Double Razor Bore, which since there's two of them for seven points, that does work as part of their FA1. Uh, Swamp Gobber Chef, the Wastelander is my rec option, um, min unit of Bone Grinders, and then there is a max unit of Brigands with UA, <laughs> which isn't showing up on the screen for some reason. I'll get it in there. Okay, so this might just sound weird once he adds it in. Uh, and my sideboard is Hutchuck, Gudrun, and Lanissa for some extra threat ranges. So for Signar, I've decided to bring uh, Kane 2 in Sons of the Tempest. And uh, this is kind of bouncing a little bit off of what Ethan had said. I think Kane 2 doesn't... He used to be this big deal, and people just... You don't really see him a whole lot anymore with the way the game's evolved. So I decided to bring someone who has kind of fallen off the radar just to see how they fit in Brawl Machine. Uh, Kane is a really active caster, and I'm able to bring a ton of shooting between my Black 13th unit, the min unit of Tempest Blazers, and then Bastion Falk buffs all this magic damage. I'm able to bring three really decent shooting jacks. Like, Signar just has access to enough of them to where I can get whatever I want. My specialists look a little weird. I'm bringing an Ironclad and Field Mechanics, and it's really, the Field Mechanics can't plug in easily, so it's really just removing one of the lights and the gobber tinker so that I can get a heavy in here in case I need that extra hitting power if the gun mages can't quite crack what my opponent's bringing. I won the roll to go first, and the unit of the brigands are deployed up on towards the circle zone, and their prey is the ponies. And then there, I'm measuring ponies walk and shoot range, bottom one, just to make sure they don't walk and e-leap into me. But then, like, I didn't realize this was a burning earth, so they couldn't see me anyway, so it wasn't even, like, thinking. And then that was me thinking that brigands were speed six. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I physically <laughs> can't run into your threat turn yeah, we one. Had a, had a few few issues here. <clears throat> And any of you minion players that plays Thornfall, you'll keely note I did not deploy my trenches because I haven't played Thornfall in like, like forever. Ever, yeah. yeah, I know. I've always been a will work for foodcaster. So even pre update to them, I just never saw a reason to. Yeah. So like we fix it for game two, mm -hmm. but uh, Midas put Death March on the brigands and just walked. And then basically, this is a turn of positioning. I'm, I won the roll to go first, and I windmill slam turn one because everything in Brian's army out-threatens me. And there you see me. I ran the brigands 12, and now they're <laughs> backing up two inches. Uh, everything Brian has out-threatens me, so I want to be able to walk into the zones turn two, dig in, and then maybe def 16 will save me from some of his shooting. But, like... Yeah, because then we're mostly looking at nines to hit, which isn't super great for me. Yeah, the problem is Kane walking up and yeah. just trick shotting like four to eight brigands off the table, yeah, and then Kane's got a lot of power. Yeah, uh, Wastelander runs up just behind the forest, and I think that Wastelander is the thing that I'm worrying about the most in this list right now. Like, I just with all the shooting I have, I want to make sure that my clutch shots don't get caught by him. Yeah, and he's my pretty much my throwaway contest piece, and then that's my turn one. So for my turn one, 
I know Ethan's kind of got everything in a place where I can't get to it. So right now I have to leverage the fact that he's not going to be able to score on the bottom of two. And chances are whatever he puts into these zones, if I focus down on one of them, I can probably take out that zone and clear it for myself. So I decide to commit Kane to where all of the... Uh, um, all the brigands are and it's worth noting here that i put out all three of my upkeep so this is the first time i've ever touched kane uh i can only put two of those up because fire for effect costs three as much as i've cast that i just keep forgetting so that gets corrected through maybe not the first game but the, the I guess, second game it yeah, does. the second game it gets corrected so um i decide to keep the pony or the the tempest blazers outside of ethan's threat range because i know he's got um he might not be able to walk up through those clouds, but maybe around them. Yeah, some of them were positioned so they could walk and skirt and then repo behind it. Yep, so I want to make sure that those guys stay safe because they don't have the greatest stats in the world, but they do have some really cool shot types, and I want to make sure they kind of stick out to when we can get into dealing with some of these brigands. Uh, the hunter with his extended control range is kind of really going wide so that it can put some damage into the... Uh, the Warhog, because that's something that I also need to be dealing with. So the Charger comes up as well to try and deal with that, and the rest is just the Black 13th getting up and then taking the flag with the Gobber. So my turn two, it's all about positioning because I can't get to him and I know I have to eat the alpha. So basically I need to flood the zones and hope enough survives to retaliate against his long threat ranges. So I upkeep Death March uh, in Thornfall. There's no spell slave, so I have to pay for it. So I'm sitting on five. And I'm just kind of trying to plan out. And I have to respect Kane's assassination. So like there's a 19-inch bubble where... Midas just literally can't live. Yeah, and it's a weird 19-inch bubble with him with uh, with Gate Crash. If you give me one thing that you think is okay, but leave him every... It's a kind of like a weird Lord of the Feast thing. If you leave Midas within five inches of anything, that's when te within ten and a half of me. Like, I'll I'll go for it. Yeah, but you're behind the wall right now, so you don't have Pathfinder. Exactly, the charge is a problem right and now. And then here, the Gunbore walks up, tries to shoot a black... Or the Goober... And then drifts onto no camp Kane. Yep, this is unfortunate because that's a high explosive shot coming at Kane with no camp. And I boost damage <sighs> and I roll, <laughs> I do 12. Yep, you were three boxes from killing him with just that first shot. I oh. mean, realistically, you should be camping <laughs> one because you didn't have enough focus to get your upkeeps out. Exactly, yeah. And then I would have been at eight, which is still not super great. Like, Kane isn't wanting to live here. Bullet Dodger is on Kane, so he's a little bit more survivable to that kind of stuff. But that drift was just in the perfect direction. Yeah, I was trying to drift on the goober or into the black 13th i was not even going to try and shoot kane behind the wall like that was just just luck like i i would have still preferred to take out the other members yep a, a broken gun bore is at least right twice a day is that how that goes eh, something like that <laughs> and there brigands are all walking up and they're just going to be digging in and i'm trying like with command nine and having to keep the UA back so I don't lose the abilities, it's so hard to move them up and respect trick shot and e leaps. So basically, I have to make pods of two and just kind of hope that either tough checks go well or that my def 16 saves me. Yeah, mm -hmm. they got to spread out weird. And there, I'm trying to find like tokens to show that they're dug in, but like I don't have, yeah, enough. I just know they're dug in, they're gonna be hard to hit, so yep. And I had to proxy the razor boards as two shredders. I didn't get a chance to go to the game store on Wednesday and grab them, so they, they're unfortunately that the proxy shame is on me, yeah. And that top one was gonna animus and walked into the zone, but I realized I'm gonna be shifting over, so I won't be in range. And then there, I smartly measure out nine inches away from the corner of the zone. So that way, the Warhog, I have no threat extenders, so he's going to threaten a whopping nine inches. So that way, if he tows the zone, the Warhog can get there and potentially clear the zone. And then there, I'm just running up. Bone grinders. Bone grinders. And, and then I think you were trying to spread out real far, but then realized that their command is not really that great. Yeah. And I realized they're 
Or no, that's later on. I realized that how bad their command is. Like right now, they might even be out of command because I yeah, their command the six guys in the back. Their command six, and I thought they were way better than that. I thought at they least, were at least seven. At least seven, right? Yeah, I, but yeah, because the brigands tiny. are seven, so I was like, oh, they're seven, because most stuff is always the same. Yeah, and that's just me. I haven't played. The only time I play Brig or the Pop Boy is usually with Jaga Jaga for feet throwaway yeah. models. I've only ever played it in trolls, and they stay in a little corner and back and kill each other that's what they did forever yep. ago when they could get corpses i think yep. goober on the flag wastelander just walks up behind the woods So now the game gets to start for me. Like, I'm ready and raring to go with all these shooting attacks. I don't play shooting armies very often in War Machine. So being able to, like, live the Signar dream of playing all the gun mages and all the shooting jacks is now mine. So I think the low-hanging fruit for me is trying to collapse the bottom zone. Um, but I, I think I start to see some things play out here in my head. And I'm like, you know, Midas is camping too. And I feel like Midas is in range for a lot of things to happen to him that he wouldn't appreciate. So I'm measuring out Kane walking through underneath the wall here. He doesn't have Pathfinder, but I've got enough to kind of get through the forest to be able to see through to... No, you don't have oh, one. No. You, you were measuring right. gate crash threats. Oh, gate crash threats. That's what I was working on. You could on. get on the Wastelander and the... And the one bone grinder. Yep, but you would not get to Midas. Yep, So they, and there was no way to fix that. So I'm like, okay, well, there's nothing's going to happen here. If one of those things was towing the forest a little bit, maybe I could get a charge and get there. But with no Pathfinder, I really can't get over the wall anyway. So it's not even a big deal. So the first thing I need to deal with is that stupid Wastelander. Like, I don't like him even when I don't have a really shooting-focused army. But I think Falk is a really good uh, option to try and deal with him here. He's the one who's holding fire for effect. And uh, he also has Pathfinder, so going through the woods isn't a problem for him. So I move him up. He's got the three inches to see through the forest to the Wastelander. And shooting at rat seven means I need like an eight to connect with you. You need a 10. I'm oh, sorry, a 10. Because I'm def 17 with blade shield. And you can barely see, but now you can see the dice are out. I connect with him. And this I use the cool like little crevasse blasty shot where my gun becomes range six, I or range eight i think i can't remember range but eight it's basically the crevasse spell yeah so whoever i hit um they take their normal damage but then i create a spray off of them so uh the wastelander goes down easy peasy and now i get to take that spray off and shoot all these bone grinders that are in the that are kind of not in the zone but kind of hanging out around it i was like maybe I, I, I have a choice i can go for bone grinders or i can go for a bone grinder in midas i figure maybe i'm nil maybe the assassination plan isn't completely gone to me i can at least make midas a little scared uh so i decide to take those hits in i connect on the bone grinder and kill it and it doesn't tough then midas i think took a little bit of damage you not a much Oh, okay. So, because you didn't get fire for Fex, you needed a seven. Yeah. So, and I didn't roll it. I thought that I, I hit him, but there's a lot of shooting going on. It's easy to forget. So, uh, of note, the charger got a second focus allocated to it. So, like, maybe the assassination isn't the greatest idea for me anymore. And maybe it's better to, like, maybe put some damage onto beasts so that I don't. Uh, so that I don't have to worry so much about transfer targets in the future. Because, like, I know Midas brings his battle group back. So if I can soften the battle group up a little bit, then it's probably not going to hurt me so much in the future. So um, I opt to go with Kane and walk him into the trench on the opposite side, more going towards this bottom zone. And uh, I decide to put some trick shot hits into the Warhog. It's worth noting also that I feeded this turn, because this way I figure I can get some extra damage into that Warhog and do some work. So uh, between all of the shots on the Warhog and then the, the, the trick shot hits into Midas, we're just kind of plinking both of them kind of away. I'm not spending any any focus to boost any damage rolls on the Warhog. I figure I'm not trying to really kill it this turn. I'm just trying to make it a really unattractive transfer target. And maybe I'll take out a system or something and it's not a big deal. So after everything's said and done, the Warhog hasn't taken a ton of damage, but Midas, I think, has been cracked for maybe seven by now. No, you did two because it's dice minus six. Yeah, I thought it was like two, three, and a number. Uh, you did two. One didn't break armor. And then I think you did one. Okay, so not not high. It was not that I was too far off, but 
Um, I did some damage to him at least, and that makes me feel good. So that means that the Tempest Blazers up here are going to go in, and they're going to try and manage some of these uh, brigands a little bit. Uh, I did set a couple of them on fire. I probably really only needed to set one out on fire here. I probably could have spread these guys out a little bit more. But uh, one of them ends up connecting with... Uh, Both of them went after the battle. Or oh, the gun, the, the gun board. That's right. So this is... Yeah, this is Operation Try and Soften Up the Beasts a little bit more. So now the Black 13th get to go, and... Uh, I did put up Counter Blast yeah. on the gun board, so that's what he's respecting with the six inches. Exactly, yeah. We want to make sure we're not getting shot out of nowhere on that, especially with that AoE and the Black 13th not really known for their survivability. So they're going to start peppering in shots on that gun board to also make it an unattractive transfer target. I figure... Um, Anytime Ethan tries to transfer damage to one of these beasts, I was hoping for some of it to blow back on him uh, with getting their boxes down so low. So Lynch ends up shooting first and does a respectable amount of damage with, uh, with Brutal as his shot type. And now I'm trying to figure out how, how do I want to split the rest of these shots because um, Watts, of course, is going to be the next one to go. And uh, I, I'm like, okay, well, we'll just go ahead and throw that into him and see what it does to the gun bore. And he leaves him on five boxes, I think. And uh, now I've got real questions about what Ryan's going to try and do. And I think maybe maybe I forwarded a few activations. Maybe I I might have taken some pot shots at a gun or uh brigands no that was all into the gun board that was the black 13th oh you I ended up shot i didn't him. realize all four of the shots went into him yeah because you left him on enough where the last shot couldn't kill him gotcha. so that's why ryan okay. put in the second shot so they just peppered him down to not a whole lot of boxes next up i have the charger go and my hope here is to um have him clear off the other uh i was hoping to shoot midas actually with the charger but the uh bone grinder was in my way so i shoot that it doesn't tough so now it's at least out of the zone and i've got a clear shot to midas so i decide to take it and connect and uh for with powerful shot i can boost the both the attack and damage rolls um and i do a decent amount of damage on this one i think the dice blow up pretty hard i'll have to pay attention to where my dice box is because um these tables are a little i, I zoom in on this one so you can kind of get into the action a little bit more but it does kind of mess up my dice I but, know how much damage it is because you left the razor board on, on one, one box, box, so I just have to 13. look up how many boxes they have. I think it was 13 damage. Something like that. They, yep, you did 13 because they have 14. You literally left it on one. Yep, and I that's when I forgot that the razor boards existed. So I was like, I, it, seeing lesser war beasts is just weird. So I forgot that they were there and uh, didn't... Uh, didn't register that they were going to be more transfer targets. So at least now Ethan's battle group is kind of like in the best spot for him, worst spot for me. Like ev everything's damaged, but, and I didn't kill anything because like, I thought that maybe I could go for Midas this turn, but it just didn't pan out for me. So the better option here probably would have been to just kind of pepper the beast down and sandpaper, or just kill them instead of just like kind of tweaking them. Cause like a damaged war beast is still perfectly fine. And, uh, I think this rounds out my turn with no real... I guess we do get the gun bore off, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. So I did one good thing this turn. So turn three, uh, we both scored one on our flags, and I'm feeling okay because Kane's feet's gone, but I still need to respect his list, and I think I can make a scenario push. We talk through it, and this is, we're playing with the most updated rules that they dropped, I want to say yesterday. Yeah, yesterday would be August 13th. Yes, because we're recording the 14th, not to throw out there how delayed the games are. So instead of needing just three more than your opponent to win, I need four. Otherwise, I could win this turn, because if I clear the circle, clear the square, score my flag and contest, I just auto-win. Yep, and that, that's... They're not auto-win, I just win. It's good that they fixed the the issue with the fast scoring, because it just was too fast, and it became too reliable. Yep, because, like, at that point, like, we mathed out, I'm like, okay, I just need to kill four models, and then I win. 
Uh, but unfortunately, that's not the case anymore. So I have so you to try play and, the game. <laughs> I know I got to play the game and ho- and try to figure out how I don't just die. Uh, so the Warhog does not have Pathfinder. He can charge the charger in the in the forest and get enough to engage Falk. I do love saying that they'll charge the charger. Yeah, like it's it's the best thing ever. And there, I'm trying to measure where Midas can run away screaming, uh, but that's still in Kane's threat. So unless I l- physically just run behind the rock. I can't get away from it. And that's where the theme benefit of trenches would help a whole bunch. (laughs) Uh, Because into a shooting army, trenches turn out to be pretty good. It's kind of funny, too, because if your trenches were here and Midas was protected by them, there's 100% no way I would go after Midas. And then I think I would just eliminate most of your battle group. Yep. You would kill the... Because Kane would just shoot. And instead of wasting focus on trick shots, he would just buy... Buy more attacks, yeah. You would, you would buy five attacks into the uh, Warhog, and then the Charger shots and the Hunter shots, like, the the Warhog would go down. Yep, losing the gun boy and the Warhog would be a bummer. Yep. There, Goober just walks back to get on the flag. I forgot to promote the Bone Grinder leader. <laughs> yep. Uh, so the leader walks up, uh, craft talismans on Midas, so I can do a eight-inch range of battle lust. So I'm going to try and walk backwards, but get within eight of the brigands, so that way... Uh, I can maybe clear that zone because Ace is in the zone, but I can charge him. And I think with Battle Lust, I can maybe do some work. So here, I'm walking back to get within eight. And sadly, like with that eight inches, that's as far back as I can go and get Battle Lust. So like I'm kind of still in the danger zone. Yep. And I'm camping two. Yeah, that's pretty pretty rough. But the feed is gone, so you have that going for you. Yeah, but like I don't have the. I mean, I'm fourteen, sixteen. I've taken about four damage right now, so like it's not terrible. But you have so many boosted shots. Yeah, I there's need to a lot of them. a lot of dice being thrown that can spike real hard. And then there, the brigands are doing a hog wild. Hog wild. So the ones that can shoot, the ones they can see, are shooting. I'm missing a bunch because I need sevens with prey. Uh, no. The one in the wood, I needed nines because concealment. Yeah, one is one is holy in the woods. Yep. The other ones, I only needed sevens. So I crank it. I At dice plus one, I roll two. Yeah, so that was fun to have one just stay alive. Yeah, that was unfortunate. I connect, finally kill him with the second guy. Miss. Got a line around the woods. Miss. Because they're at five base, up to seven with prey. Uh I put one shot in the ace because he can't shoot anything else. And then now I'm charging. My plan here is with battle lust, my wild or my hog wild guys that charge the ponies uh, can kill them. I'll cycle prey to ace and then hopefully battle lust will kill them. Yeah, I think now you're just unpacking all those. All those uh, brigands and ace. I think you get three on him, and then I get the four fourth. because I for- keep forgetting that the the leader for the brigands is so unique. Yep, because it's not. Uh, there's only like three units in the game where the leader has a different weapon. Yeah, and like they don't see play that often. Uh, so the UA is just running to keep everybody in command. So I get I want to say two up on the top pony, and I think I got three on the top pony, two on the middle, and now they're mat eight. Thanks yeah, to Prey. so they're hitting pretty reliably on those sixes. Yep. And so, taking them out easy peasy. Because of Battle Lust. Now I cycle Prey to Ace. I hit. And I'm a POW 12 Weapon Master, so dice off three. And you just and I blow it. it up. Yeah, like Ace almost lost it in one attack. Yep, there went his movement. And as you can see, like he's down to five boxes, and then second one kills. Yep. And I'm, I think there was really no reason for me to put Ace behind or in front of that wall. I should have just left him behind it, but I was really thinking about this all in assassination run. So, like, that was just a, a mistake on my part that I won't make again in game two. And then there I repo, and I can't repo to engage the Black 13th and be in the zone. So I decide to score the point. Uh, there, Warhog charges. One for the charge. I boost the hit with the gore. Yeah, because I'm only going six. into the charger right yep. now. So I need sevens. I hit, but do not crit. Roll really, Tons really of well. Damage. Take yep. out his movement. Uh, I think this one went into fault. Oh, no, no I'm still on the charger. And here I left him on two. I did not aggression dial. If I had, I wouldn't have had to waste an attack on him. Yep. So now I had to buy him boost into Falk. And that puts me at full, where if I had aggression dialed, I would be still camping one. 
Yep. And then there, the Razor Boar that had its just his spirit left runs to engage. Mm. And that's me. So I'm super happy that Kane isn't dead. Not that I really feared for his life or anything, but with Midas just kind of hanging out in the middle, I feel like I still have a really respectable assassination because both of Ethan's razor bores are out of control and the Warhog's full, so I don't have to worry about charge or anything really at all. Um, I decide to move away from the razor bore and take the shot into Midas. I think that you missed the free strike because your mind's out. Yeah, so I'm mat five and yeah. up to mat seven, so I so physically we, can't hit. We boost at dice minus one, I think, on Midas and do eight or something like that. It wasn't you, great, it seven. But, but it was decent. And here, like, I transferred it, and then you point out, oh, nothing's in control. Yeah, that And I'm like, oh, out, I transferred to the Warhog. And I was like, oh, shit, he's full because I did an aggression dial. Yep. Like, so in my head, when I, like, recapped it, I was like, oh, if I had aggression dial, I'd be on three Fury. Yep. So, like, I was like, oh, I'm on three Fury. But I'm not. <laughs> so now I'm getting the Black 13th up. And uh, I start off with Ryan and uh, Watts. They can't shoot beyond the forest into Midas. So I'm just trying to get that concentrated fire going up and uh, putting some shots into Brigands uh, just because I want Lynch's shot to be really good when he goes into Midas. Uh, they end up hitting all of their shots. I be- oh, Yeah, they hit all of their shots and kill two Brigands total. Yep. So that isn't really big deal for me. So now I just unpack the shot into Midas and that's enough to take him out the game. Yeah, it turns out with no transfers, you just die <laughs> two brutal damage shots and that's just me being an idiot. So after losing round one, I decided to sideboard out my rec card of the Wastelander for Gudrun just so I could get a solo that camps on the flag because he's going to hang over to knock himself down on the flag. That way he just doesn't die to f- to all of the shooting. And trick shots shouldn't kill him at dice minus five. So like that's pretty much the only thing I swap out. Otherwise, everything went pretty okay. It's just like I'm an idiot and let my caster get killed. So I thought maybe I could regroup with that. Yep, I, I and the I think it's a good call just because the waste with all the trick shots and the spray, the wastelander isn't really all that safe and isn't getting the full use out of his stuff because I'm able to just unpack into him. So I think that this was a good call, even though some people might say, ah, that's a little weird. For my list, I'm not making any changes to it. I don't really feel like I need the extra heavy in here. Uh, I'm able to get enough work done with Kane's feet to take out some of Ethan's battle group, and uh, I really like having the extra shot from the hunter and ace together, so I'm just leaving it be. The list functions perfect the way it is. So since I lost the game, I auto win the die roll for game two, and I opt to go first again because I need to get up the board. Like my logic, like I just don't think going second. And as you can see, I put out trenches. <laughs> yeah, we got trenches this time. Yep, Gudrun basically, actually the almost the exact same deployment as last time. Death march on the brigands. Gudrun's up on the flag, uh, and I have that one trench, which is barely in the kill box where Midas is going to live this game, so he doesn't die. And the other one is up as most as it can. That way I can be in the zone and don't have to dig in. So that way those brigands could actually walk and shoot. And then it's pretty much a repeat of last game. Prey on the ponies. Because I think everything went okay. As good as could be. Damage wise, yeah. yeah. I think your, your, your matchups were picked well. And your list doesn't care too much about the terrain on that side. Because you know I'm going to take the side that takes cover away from you. Yep, yeah, because you don't want to give me four things of cover. Sure don't. So 
So the only real modification to my deployment here is that I kind of tucked the Tempest Blazers in a little bit so I didn't have to try and swing them around this Burning Earth. Um, I keep forgetting that Burning Earths are also forests, so like any kind of true sight stuff I have is kind of moot against them. So I'm going to try and use the forest to protect a lot of my stuff. But Kane really likes living behind this wall, so again, I get him and Ace up there, and it's worth noting the first time I put Ace up here that he pops Infiltrate the first time every time. Uh, just to kind of make it so that Ethan can't just take a low-hanging fruit gun bore shot into Kane. Uh, even though I've got Bullet Dodger on me, I just want to make sure that nothing weird happens. So the Tempest Blazers are kind of dodging the 15-inch uh, threat range on just shooting. And one of them gets corroded, which I'm okay with because I want to try and unpack these guys a little bit better than what I did last game. It's one of the nice things about Brawl Machine is that if there's just something that doesn't quite work out for you, you get the chance to regroup and say, okay, what didn't work this time and how can I stop that from happening again? And I feel like the matchup of my Tempest Blazers against your uh, Brigands is okay. They don't, it's not like I think they're going to do a ton over trying to deal with the heavies on the bottom. And this way it gives me some guys that I can put in the zone that are decent defense and I don't mind losing them if they're, if they're the peace trade units. That hunter enjoys living on the edge of that zone because I'm able to get lines to whatever I want to and be able to pop shots into whatever comes in. Uh, this time, Falk and some of the Black 13th are going to be living in that trench to kind of avoid some of the scatters. But for whatever reason, I decide to put Lynch out in the middle of the table for whatever reason. This is where he wants to be. So my turn to, like, pretty much going through what happened last game, I need to get into the zones, dig in, and then try and position. I can't get to his lights uh, with anything on my side. That's why they ran the full distance to get into the zone. And I can't really leave the, the safety of my trench with Midas. Yep. Otherwise, I'm just under threat. Fort Pillow Trench. Basically. And even then, like, Def 18... Uh, like if yeah, Kane wants it, average, yeah, he wants it. If Kane wants it, he's gonna get it. So, uh, Gunbore is just going to. I put that trench up there where the Gunbore could walk into the zone and contest, and then still be in there. Maybe boost some shots that are relevant. Yeah, because I still need a pretty good number to hit you there. I mean, the the Tempest Blazers are not hitting you near average at all, and Kane, it's like a coin flip almost. Yep. So go up, boost a shot into him. I hit it. Yeah. It boosted rat five. Boost damage just to ensure it kills. And that was that was unfortunate on my part because I, I don't like losing anything from Black 13th with that concentrated power going. So why Lynch was hanging out here is beyond me. But uh, at least you didn't scatter into a light or cane again. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I figured it was either or. Like if, if he was back, I would try and drift into the trench. Yeah. Uh, th and then he did put up counter blast again, so he's full. And then brigands are staying nine and a half outside of ponies. That way they can't walk nine, engage half inch, and stop digging. Because if they walk up and gunfighter e-leap into me, that might be pretty bad. But I guess I could have positioned so that way the e-leap would go back into them. Because they are not immune yeah, to electricity. We're not, we're not in storm division here. But, like, I put my brigands base to base because I'm trying to limit where he can go. And I'm trying to stay where I could walk into the forest and maybe shoot next turn. Otherwise, some brigands just go into the trench. And I can't shoot anything, so they just double get cover because they dig in and are in a trench. Yep, best of both worlds for him. Yep. So we, I think we're kind of messing with this bottom zone a little bit to see, like, what what's your plan here. And I yep. think the the um, this, bone grinders on yep, this is where I find out their command six and everything goes to crap yeah because my plan was okay he has black penny with the black 13th but I'm gonna make him waste the shot so and for some reason I don't put that bone grinder that's behind the force in the zone so those are the only two in command so there I left a gap so the uh, the razor bore uh, could put up his animus and then charge at the charger so now i have a counter charge bot in the zone and i theoretically would have a guy cont engaging him but i don't
So not being able to gauge while, engage while you're out of formation is kind of helping me out a little bit here. Um, you still can't aim because you're in melee engaged, with me. Yeah. So like, I'm engaged with you, but you can't do things like free strikes or whatever. Yep. So um, this time around, I've decided that instead of trying to, since Ethan's kind of killed Midas for me, at least like now that now that um, that temptation to go for Midas is not there, I decide to kind of flip the way I'm playing the list this time, and I'm going to go for attrition. If you look at the bottom zone, there's really not a whole lot in there contesting things. So I feel like... I can, with the shots that I have, I can get that zone clear and maybe go up two points this turn, which would mean that I would be up one point on you. Or no, I'd be up one point, yeah. So um, I don't know what I can do with the top zone, really. I think the top zone is just going to be one where I have to try and hold off as much as I can because a lot of the shots that I'd be able to take in there are kind of like Hail Mary shots. Like I can go ahead and start shooting my own Tempest Blazer and start e-leaping that way, but the Tempest Blazers aren't necessarily known for their ability to take a shot. So even at POW 10, it's still like dice off four. It's not great. So the first thing I think I'm doing here is uh, um, the corrosion check, of course. So there's that, and that's done. So uh, my Blazer got lucky and is no longer corroded. So super win for me on that one, even though it probably just dies to like a single pig charging it. So I think I go in the tank a little bit here, and I think I have the time to afford it. Um, so I decide that Kane's going to be the one that comes out and decides to clear the charger and part of that zone here. Based on where I'm at, I'm able to get a shot on one of the the one uh, bone grinder that's engaging my charger. And then I also will be able to have a shot on the bone grinder that's in the middle of the zone. And based on where I put myself, I also get a shot on the... Uh, the razor bore that's in there too because i want to get rid of this counter charge thing because falk is really key to my plan for dealing with this warhog because he would be the only one left that's really dealing with the zone at all so i decide to feat this turn with kane because i want to try and take as little shots as possible to get damage into that razor bore uh and i don't want to camp nothing either because i don't want the gun bore to just like tank a shot into me again so i end up hitting the razor bore and do a couple damage rolls on it and take it off yeah you shoot it twice with your initials yeah which i'm i'm kind of corner case to i guess like it doesn't matter so much because yeah i don't think you needed to feed yeah i was really confused on why you feed it just for models that you basically auto hit kill i if guess you hit. like this being my second game with kane in the history of forever like Maybe I just wasn't having a whole lot of respect for POW 12 gunshots. If Kane's feet still RFP'd, like, because his old, like, his Mark II, the Mark III feet, that was the big nerf, in my opinion. The a, his feet doesn't do the AOE threes or doesn't RFP. Yeah. So, like, it's still a phenomenal feat. And no, then they, they just feat. nerfed his trick shot. Unfortunately, I believed in the power of my camera's battery a little too much here, and it died. So... The things that I end up unpacking on this turn, which we'll see at the start of Ethan's next turn, is that the uh, Kane has successfully cleared the bottom zone from the problems that those light jacks are having and just kind of stays there. I think we're camping one at this point, maybe two. Um, I don't think I take shots into anything else with him. Uh, the next thing that happens is the Charger walks up, or no, I think Falk walks up and yep. takes shots into, or takes the the rune shot into the warhog and that ends up connecting and wiping out the uh war or the the brig not brigand the bone grinder that was behind him and then the black 13th come up and shoot him off after the jacks have unloaded into him so they're the warhog's gone and i feel like we're gonna lose that backbone grinder too that's by the rock maybe yeah he's and dead the tempest blazers just walk up i think they take out a couple of brigands and then the uh ace takes one out too with a trick shot and his normal hit. So not a ton of work up there on the top zone, but enough to where I think it's a little more difficult for Ethan to unpack those brigands into me in a really huge, meaningful way. So let's go ahead and move on to Ethan's turn again. I'm sorry about the battery thing. We'll try and pay more attention, even though I say that every time this happens. Yep. And it's worth noting, since I didn't put that stupid uh, piggy in the zone, he toughed but and when he had no shots left, and but he's out of the zone. Otherwise, I would have contested it, and we would have stayed even. Yeah, and I think I score two, and you score one. So yep. I'm up on you, but it's just by a little bit. Yeah, but in Brawl Machine, that makes all the difference.
So going into my turn, I've survived a Kane Fee turn. I'm not dead, but Kane did murder a bunch of my crap. So which is always a give or take. But luckily, he I think he wasted his feet, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, this was not an opportune feet turn for me, but I, I just was really worried about not being able to kill everything in that zone and get the charger. Yeah, your POW 12 guns at my armor 14 I know, I know. light and yep. or lesser. and Dude, so there I'm doing my vengeance attacks. Which they aren't getting swings, but I'm vengeancing into the woods so I can get line of sight to some. Because I was thinking about doing a hog wild, but I just don't have enough lines. Uh, and I vengeance the UA uh, back so that way Midas could walk along the trench and battle luster. Uh, there we took a nice little break for food, so now we're just coming back. Yes, yeah, and my, the... my Twizzler's sugar free, so it's healthy. Yep. Kinda. So that's the weird time jump you see there. Uh, so now I'm just planning out what I'm going to be doing this turn because I lost a whole bunch. Part of me wants to try and just take a shot at Kane, but he's camping one. So even if I hit his death 19 butt with my Rat 5 gun bore, like, I probably still wouldn't one-shot him unless I spike. So it's not worth it. I need to try and come back attrition-wise. Even though I've lost a bunch and Kane is going to probably keep killing brigands over and over and there's nothing I can do. Yeah, Kane's kind of in a position where he can kind of run the board now because I've taken so much away from you and you really haven't touched much of mine yep. yet. So... This is your time to kind of balance that attrition back your way. A uh, gun bore aimed shot ace who is in uh, AOE range of a murder pony. Uh, I boost damage on both. I do decent to ace. As you can see, I do about seven. Uh, but I didn't cripple anything. Blast damage on the pony kills it. And then I believe I put up counter blast. I think you... I think I opted not to. No, because I had the boost hit, boost damage, boost damage. Yeah. I got nothing. I guess counter blast isn't super valuable on him right now anyways. No, and you always just forward. stay outside the six inches. So six it's inches like... is really easy to stay away from something with counter blast. Counter charge is a little different because usually counter charge is where you want to be. And like at the worst, you take like a, a, a pow or like a damage shot. But getting counter charge really hurts. Yep. And their brigands are just walking up. I tried to walk the UA into the rubble or into my trench at an angle. But that would get them out of command because they were max command, so she had to walk straight forward. Yeah, there was one that was out of command, and it was important that he needed to be in command to get his attack. Yeah, because I figured if Kane wants to snipe out my UA, it's fine. Uh, I miss the first attack, and then I start taking attacks. Uh, this I've, is the one guy who could shoot that one pony and rocked him in one, so if he wasn't able to shoot, that guy would have been alive. No, I think there was a couple more at the angle where I could see around the woods. Yeah, maybe. That, would, that Burning Earth template is massive, so it's always yeah. weird unless you're really up on it. And now the rest of them, they cycled prey to Ace, and I'm trying to take him out. Yep, and, and I got, I think I want to say I got there. four shots left at him. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a decent number. He's a little scared. Yeah, and I think I took out it, his bad. movements with one of the shots. Yep, and that was the last shot I remember because you killed him to the box. So I was like, unfortunate that I couldn't just get him to last a little bit longer in that zone. But it means that Ethan can now score it. So. I didn't really get to do everything I wanted. Maybe Ace should have been more behind the wall, but it is what it is. Yeah, so the brigands are just repoing up. A bunch of them are on fire, so that's going to be fun for next turn because I'm starting to run low on clock. Uh, I am you at, got like eight minutes left? Yeah, I'm eight minutes left, and luckily I'm losing stuff, so I don't need to activate as much. <laughs> uh, Midas, I'm trying to figure out where he wants to go. I'm feeding this turn with Midas, and I'm wasting a bunch of time relearning how Midas's feet works. Yeah, I, I think both of us like glazed him over and was like, oh, he's a battle lust caster. Oh, he's got a feet that brings war beasts back. But we didn't look at like how he does it or how much they bring back. Like I'm like, I said, I know they can't force this turn, but can they activate? Yeah, I thought they couldn't activate. That. And then we look how up. much damage they come back with. Yep, so I can place them completely within six and then they can still activate. They just can't be forced. So we end up measuring... Uh, that I can place him within six, and then he can walk and punch that dude. There's the five inch for, or the six inch for his walk and punch. He can't boost anything though. And then I'm feeding, and I believe I end up. I had two corpses from my guys dying, which I converted the fury. So I'm sitting on seven fury after upkeeping death march. I blow six of it, so I end up healing nine and everybody. But like I go back and forth on how much I'm healing in my clock. I think I've already wasted two minutes. Yeah, it's rough. Just on my feet, mm -hmm. which in Brawl Machine you cannot waste. 
just because like as you can see i'm still going through marking damage and figuring out how much i'm healing yeah it's a really involved feat because you have to reset the damage on your beast and then do it or heal it and you know it's it's, it's funky yep and there i end up finally going with the full six and i just decided the camp one because i want to try and get as many boxes back as i can and yep it's just still recounting and my clock is still ticking <laughs> yeah, like, like now we're over three minutes on my feet just just trying to fit and it's an easy feat it's just hard to do all the dexterity work for yep. it and then there i just walk over stay in the trench uh so now this boar walks up he aggression dials because you don't need to force for it uh because i'm like okay if i hit this will go good uh but i need sevens so i lead with the gore miss first cleaver hits uh dice plus two uh, takes out his right arm, and then the third one misses, and then I aggression dial take two damage. Yeah. So, like, if I had hit with all my attacks, it would have been cute. And now Bone Grinder toes the zone like he should have been, and then Razor War walks up and toes the zone. Yeah, and I think your positioning here was just because you were running out of time. Yep, and uh, they couldn't run, so they had to walk. And then I score two to one. So I think this is bottom of three now. Yeah. Bottom of three. So Ethan gave me the gift of clock advantage, um, which with me going second is huge, especially since I've got this really shooty army that takes a lot of time to kind of resolve everything that it needs to do. So Kane ends up allocating one to the charger. I feel like uh, I can probably do some work outside of uh, dealing with, or I feel like I can kill the the heavies over here without the the charger so Falk goes up with his fire for effect and just sprays down that whole line with rune marked and we hit everything that's in there and i believe that we take everything out except yep. for mi the the brigand might tough i don't you like you rolled to nope you kill it yeah. you rolled to the box to kill the warhog so aggression dial killed my warhog exactly yeah like so my feat was me trading three minutes for Falk to just kill with a spray. Yep, and we are able to get Falk's running gun to go off, and then I run into the flag. We we kind of jiggled it a little bit. I think Ethan might have knocked it, and I'm not. I wasn't paying attention to like how close this would be. So I we we figured that he's in contesting range of the flag. So that's really good for me now, since my army takes a little bit longer to get past that midpoint. So now I've got that there, and I need to try and do something with this charger. So I walk up and I'm like, ah, I can take some pot shots into Midas. Um, in hindsight, it might have been just better to like count my losses or accept my losses of focus and just run him onto the flag and exist there. No, you went for the gun boar. Oh, the gun. That's right. I walked b behind the, the trees so I could try and take shots of the gun boar. I think I miss a couple, but I forget to claim the rear bonus. Uh, I think you were almost parallel with him. It's hard to see at this angle, but... I knocked the gun board, but he's directly facing forward. So I think like you were parallel to him. Yeah. And you either, weren't fully in his rear arc. Either way, like I, I just don't connect with him and do anything really. Maybe I hit him once and did some damage, but not, not nothing too crazy. So the black 13th decides to pull over and start going into the zone to deal with some of these brigands. Uh, they've got some low hanging fruit if they snipe. So they are not uh, shooting over the wall and dealing with that. So I know these are all on fire and there's a good chance that fire will just kill them, but I don't want to have to worry about, all these guys staying alive because of the way that Ethan rolls dice. So I decided to just kind of start attritioning them off because uh, Ethan did get into a point to where like, I don't have anything in that top zone to contest with right now. So I have to be really mindful of making sure that he doesn't get to score it just out from under my nose. So my goal here is to try and wipe this zone of the unit. So I don't have to worry about him scoring it this turn because Midas isn't in it and there's nothing else left. So the hunter goes up, and I decide to just crack a shot at um, at Midas a little bit. And you realize that he wasn't fully in the trench, but you wanted to be, so we get him to pull back in. Yeah. Because um, we're playing with the, the ridges on the edge, so like yeah, his these, model keeps getting knocked. The privateer trenches look cool, but they just aren't proportionately sized correctly. Like the whole template is the trench, and instead of just the wood in the middle, which I would like more, but it, it is what it is. I, I've said that like five times this video, but whatever. I miss Midas. Don't do anything, which is fine. The hunter is just going to score that zone for the rest of the game anyhow. 
Uh, next up, I think we have Kane going, trying to do some wonder work. Yeah, because your goober missed my brigand. Yeah, I try to get some... It's always good when you can get the goober or the, the gobber tinker to do some stuff. So with that rat four hand cannon, he ends up not connecting. Or no, he connects, but I think you tough. No, this is Kane. Kane just... Oh. Kane shot a guy, toughed him, and then you were going to shoot the one behind the wall. Yeah. And then I was like, why are you doing that? Then you just shot the knockdown one and trick shot it into the guy that wasn't knocked down. Yep, I picked my... But then my, he toughed. I think at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit like funky with the time because now I'm getting closer to Ethan on time, and I don't want that. I still want... I want to end my turn with the advantage still because then that means I've still got a massive amount of pressure that I can put on Ethan that turn. So... I'm kind of judging what I'm going to do with Kane right now. Uh, it's taking me a little bit longer to figure out what I actually want to do here, and I just I can't contest this zone anymore, so I just decide to camp the one instead of going for more shots. So it's five to four. I'm down to three minutes. Uh, fire check does not go out. And then I fail my tough because rise lets you stand up and then tough. I vengeance forward to get some aim range on the goober. And then I'm still behind the wall just in case. Uh, I get my two corpses from my beast that died again. I replenish my fury. Uh, and then Midas does a fully boosted hex blast into the charger to clip Falk. I boost damage on both of them. I do pretty good. Oh, wow, he's yeah, way the, more damage. Yeah, the Charger took a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, then blast damage kills. Uh, he walks up and around to the flag, and then I end up like moving him over a little bit more because now I charge because I did stand up. Oh, I you cheated. Get, I th he doesn't get rise? No. Oh. I, it's just Pharaoh. Oh, well. Uh, Lesson so, learned. Yeah. I mean, he <laughs> missed his attack anyway, so he just basically walked into the zone. Honestly, it's probably better that Gudrun gets off the flag for me anyhow, but... Yeah. Uh, there, I miss the shot with the gun bore. Or no, the gun bore shoots the black 13th, aims, boosts, boost damage on both of them. Or yeah. I don't boost damage on the initial one because it's dice plus two. Yeah, if you roll double ones on Watt, you, you just don't yep. kill him, but you just go for it. And, and now my brigands are trying to clear that flag... And you're sub one minute now, so you got yep. you you have to keep moving. I think you were trying to figure out last turn if you should if you could get out of the zone and contest the flag, but you can't quite do it. Yep. So I miss. Uh, I think. Yeah, I this is where you try to repo out, and you're like, if I leave the zone, I can't score it. So you're kind of in this weird catch twenty two. You can't shut me out completely, so you just decide to end with no scoring the zone, but contesting my flag. Yep. So I don't score anything. You score your flag at least. No, because oh we yeah, figured we, that, yeah, the charger got you for the so now second it's five time. to five. <laughs> So I don't have a ton of time left right now, but I feel like I've got enough up on Ethan to where I can comfortably do a few things. Um, I think you're sitting at like, what, 14 seconds? Uh, I'm at 34. Oh, gotcha. So um, not a whole lot of time to screw around, but I got three minutes to try and figure out how to do what I need to do here. And number one is I need to kill the, uh, f the, the brigands that are left around here. And Kane's over there to do it, so I'm not too worried about him having problems taking care of that. Uh, the hunter doesn't really have a, a great job. The best thing I can probably do here is just take a shot at Midas. Um, but he's really going to try and stay in the zone here. I think my original goal was I allocated to him because I'm like, I can shoot Gudrun. This is what the job was. Shoot Gudrun while he's engaged. And I, I hit 
and I boost damage, but I leave him on one box. So that's unfortunate. I wanted to knock him down so that the charger could just go in and like punch him with his broken arm and do the damage he needed to. And then this is where I realized like I keep getting the right and left arms mixed on jacks that have guns and weapons. So I thought that the charger was going to be able to crank him because I thought his gun was down, but I just wasn't thinking right. Uh, next up, I try to figure out if the the uh, Gobber Tinker has um, line of sight or has is or if the the brigand's going to get cover from the Gobber Tinker uh, shooting, and he doesn't, so I connect and then he toughs. But that means that Kane can shoot at the brigand and then trick shot into the UA, and uh, that's what I end up doing. The brigand goes down, and the UA I think gets left on a couple boxes or something yeah, like that. Yeah, because she has eight boxes, and it was dice minus. Uh, yeah so i boost hit boost damage and she toughs so now i just do it again which is one of the great things about kane he can just influence so much from everywhere with all these extra shots that come out of him so i'm in the zone i'm not able to do anything to the gun bore that's in there but i'm just at least there so i'm i'm in there at least right next up the charger kind of walks around a little bit to contest the flag and then can't do anything to gudrun yeah tried to punch Gudrun and I pointed out your arm was crippled yeah, so you I, couldn't hit him without focus. That's where the confusion came So in. flips to me, Midas, I run a razor board to contest, Midas runs to the zone and then I flip and then we point out or we do the math here while we're doing it. For some stupid reason when my hand went over, I literally picked up my gun board and I was like, you know what, why don't I contest my flag where you have nothing that can score it? Yeah. So I took it out of the zone. So I score on my turn to even us up but then you auto score on your turn to go ahead. And even if I didn't and we tied, you would still win on army points destroyed because you get double points for killing my battle group twice. Yep, because you brought it back from the from the dead. Um, that's uh, I don't if I know that um, Brawl Machine has an influence with newer players. So one the thing that to will take a minute to explain is that since Ethan moved his gun bore out of the circle zone, it meant that only Midas and Kane were in there. And Warcasters don't contest each other, so it meant that we both score that circle zone at the end of his turn, where if Ethan leaves the gun bore in there, it just doesn't happen. And normally we would just be like, oh, just keep the gun bore in there, it's no big deal. But then Ethan, as he had said before, realized that whatever happens, I can just score up on him anyways. So it was a kind of a foregone conclusion, I think, at that point. Yeah, because all you had to do I had was to kill, run a, your... kill a razor boar, really. Yeah, and you had 30. You didn't have enough time to kill it, I think. Like, all you had to do was run the goober in the zone, stop me from scoring. We're, we're tied, and you auto win on, on army on, points. Yeah, because your battle group got killed twice. So. Even if you didn't get double points, I only had three miles left to your entire battle group almost. Mm -hmm. And, like, in Gudrun, like. Yeah, there was. I had quite a bit left on the table. Yeah, between the hunter and the charger. So, um, I think one of the fun things about Brawl Machine that I've enjoyed for sure, and I think Ethan's enjoying it to a point, is kind of like looking at casters that have really like kind of fallen out of favor. And I feel like some people they like flirt with Kane too quite a bit because he is such an iconic character. But. Um, for the for the most part, I don't see him being played a ton right now. And Brawl Machine, he feels really good. These casters that are super active and influential from a long ways away just seem really potent. And the ability to do things like take out armor 18 heavies with really no problems because of all the like little pop gun shooting that I have that gets boosted with all these other things I take feels really good with him. So I would definitely encourage people to explore some of those options. Uh, I think uh, pikemen are another one that might get on my list for trying out in Brawl Machine. Is the video paused? No. The we record, but this goes. Oh, because that yeah, yeah, the timer's not moving. Uh, small backwards chat on ours. I didn't know if we were actually still recording. Uh, but yeah, and into that vein, like there's still some casters where like they don't do work at 75 points. Like I still don't feel Midas does enough for his army at 25 points. Like without. He's like a speller ability f away from being a good caster. It, he still has the same problems because, like, I'm in Thornfall, so I don't get all the support he needs. Like, no pot, no spell slave for free upkeep. So, like, 
I get to upkeep Death March and Battle Lust one model a turn, unless like I brought the double Razor Boars just to try and get some f cute corpses. But I don't think you can waste points in Brawl Machine on no. lights and lessers that don't do work. Yep, like, that was one of the things that I think we explored last time when I was talking. I don't know if I talked about it, but the uh, the Rune Bear, like he's an easy auto slam for Troll Blood lists, but like he doesn't really do a whole lot. He gives you an extra extra control with your with your warlock and he gives you harmonious and that's fine but that's support that your army isn't getting to take advantage of at all like it's just the one thing you can do so you need to have active pieces that are really doing things and you cannot afford to crank a ton of work into support yeah and like i took the max brigand boat so that was a good chunk of my army yeah so like i didn't have a lot of those throwaway solos but back to midas like He's still like he still has the same problems at seventy five. They are twenty five. They does at seventy five. Like, it, with this being like a one list format, like I would never drop Midas into say if you had two lists into a this gun line that connects early. Yep, because I don't speed up my army. I don't ex like I have Death March to extend threats, but my threat rangers are still pretty mopey. Like a death, the melee threat on brigands goes up to eleven and a half which still isn't as far as his guns. Yeah, like I think if thinking about it if your if your warhog was a roadhog this game changes completely. It just gets weird cuz I have exactly my battle group points. Mm -hmm. yeah. So or at least I think I do. I can literally pull up war room and look cuz I thought Midas only had 28. So that's why I took the the warhog for 14, the two razor boars and then the gun boar for 10. Uh, as I pull up his card which takes me a little while. Uh, no, I'm way off. He has 30 points. So, yeah, actually, I did have a one-point wiggle, but I figured I needed the cracking of the Warhog over yeah. a Roadhog, so I'm like, I have it's, enough infantry clearing. It is just one of the problems with the one with the one list system, and I, I know that that's kind of the point of Brawl Machine is to take the one list and have all these specialists that can kind of warp your stuff, and I feel like my sideboard kind of deals with that a little bit better than yours because I'm taking... The one thing that my army cannot do, which is break really hard heavies and having something in there that can do that for me. But with your sideboard, you have a lot of tech pieces that come in. And that's where maybe like the the Warhog against my list is just not that uh, influential. He's like, he can kill a light, but any heavy can kill a Signar light. It's not tough. No. So I think it's there's a lot of intention that needs to go into building your sideboard and sometimes the like my my sideboard has it so where i can barely pull in those mechanics and that's just the sacrifice that i ch choose to make in order to get that heavy so there's a lot of really interesting concepts that you can explore when building for brawl machine but i think the big ones are support is something that you only spend points on if you have a lot of other stuff that benefits from it and uh i i almost i feel and I've only played a couple games now, like maybe like five or so, but I feel like minimum units are, are they just feel good. Yeah, min units are pretty good in this format. I just went with the max units for the brigands because like yeah, a min lust. unit, battle lust, and then like they don't have the stats to survive with a min unit. Mm -hmm. And then I was wondering also for the sideboard, maybe are we playing it wrong? Where does like, say you want to swap out a rec option, my like my sideboard rec options i don't think you can because theoretically any of my three solos could be a rec option like what if you could have like my gudrun in my sideboard would be zero points because he would be my rec option swap and then that frees up like more points for stuff yeah i don't think i think it's just 15 points of stuff and then if it it's card for card without altering the points over so if you take a rec option out it means you have a rec option to put in and that's what that one guy comes in from the board as so i don't think you end up getting like a buffer of five points by putting a rec option in yeah and but i wonder if maybe you should like say you designate one of like if you bring in a solo you designate one of them as your rec option so it would be zero points of your sideboard that way you have more points because like as a hordes player whenever i build lists like I just don't feel like I have the points to swap out stuff in my battle group. It like, could be an interesting thing to explore. Like it would make my situation a little bit easier with the way that the ironclad thing is going on with those mechanics. Like instead of like I could just have instead of Falk, I could bring in like a rifleman or something random, you know, um, or a gun mage captain adept. I think that's the one that's a little solo. Mm -hmm. But um, it would be an interesting thing to explore. I think that there's 
it, it's weird because I feel like sometimes the sideboard is a little too small to be super duper influential. It feels like you're doing a lot of cute things or a lot of awkward things like I am with the ironclad. But the more we explore it, the more we'll be able to come come to those conclusions without just feeling like it's whipped off the off the cuff. But I, there's some merit to that thought. Yeah, because it feels like you're just switching out like niche solos for other niche solos. Like the last game where I brought like, okay, I brought an arcanist in case I needed magical weapons just or maybe strip a cloud but this one's more of like okay maybe i drop the bone grinder unit and i get in lanissa for that way my hog wild melee threat is as far as my gunshot is Mm -hmm. like cute stuff like that but it didn't really feel influential and it doesn't really feel like the sideboard could overcome the bad matchup of like a gun line versus a small melee threat range army it reminds me of when i when i used to play magic forever ago one of the big trends for a period that I really liked was the transformative sideboards. It's where you could build your main deck as one thing with this one concept, but then you had 15 cards from your sideboard that came in that completely switched what your deck did. And I think that's what you and I are probably wanting out of Brawl Machine is to be able to take the 25 point list and have enough of a sideboard to where if we come into a matchup that's just absolutely horrible, the one or two little flip flops we could do are probably not going to save us. So having a sideboard that's set up to be a little bit more transformative means that you're going to be incentivized to take more generalist warcasters instead of somebody like Kane who's just going to pew gunshots all over you until you're dead and there's nothing you can do about it. I feel like all of this would be mitigated if there was two lists. Because like then yeah. you can like it goes back to a normal kind of steamroller feel where it's not like you're stuck in a bad matchup and you're trying to fight your way out of it. Like you can have a choice on what you're dropping. But then do you say at if you lose game one, can you switch your list in game two? I don't know. And like, if, it, if it if that's the the point, then what's the then we shouldn't have sideboards. Like maybe. Well, I mean, there's two ways you could look at it. Say it's two lists. If you stick with one list through the whole event, through the whole thing, like I pick this list, I we're gonna play it for up to three games. Then you use the sideboard. But like, I think what you're suggesting is like you have two lists, and then you could swap between them between the rounds. But then like you'd have to do a weird thing where you're like, okay, I'm switching my list, and you'd have to like almost write it down, and you both reveal at the same time. Where I like, I'm not. That could be cute as like an optional format. Yeah, I was thinking if if you just increase this the sideboard to twenty points, I feel like that's where I would my my like transformative thing comes in because then you have enough points to like really alter the way your list functions. You might be able to fit a full unit in the sideboard. Yeah, and stuff like that. But to I I feel like two lists as the format specifically just kind of takes away from the uniqueness of it, and then it's just like it's a two list twenty five point game. Steam I roller. mean. I'm fine like with two lists, 15 point sideboards, and you're stuck with the same list, and then it just functions with the normal sideboard. So it's basically what we play now, but you have a choice of what you're dropping into the matchup instead of just showing up with what you show up. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, I understand what you're saying because, like, sometimes you'll just catch bad matchups, and I, I think like we're kind of saying that we both have the same problem with with going into blind matchups. Not like ours are planned or anything, but um. I think your solution to it is just a little bit more separated from like the concept of Brawl Machine than mine is. So we're kind of both in the same same realm. It's just that you're kind of warping the format a little bit more than I am. Maybe I I don't know because I don't I don't think. Well, yours is two lists and mine is one list. Oh, <laughs> so like because like we said like in this matchup like into Signar I don't think I would ever drop Midas. So then it's like. Yeah, it gets weird even at twenty five points, and I think it's kind of cool how like building two lists that complement each other at twenty five. Yeah, because then you wouldn't be so pigeonholed in your sideboard. Because then like there are some times where like in when Midas goes into a good matchup, he would or a matchup that's even right, you would have a sideboard that could maybe tilt that matchup a little bit up in your favor, like because you have those small nuanced pieces where like. With the way that it's set now against the against this matchup, there's no way you can fix that. Yeah, like your matchup's going to be unfavorable, and it's just the way it is. Yep. So that way, I could like say I can build Midas because like I had the Bone Grinders in here for like the cutes like into hordes, like because he has a uh, curse Bone Grinder, and Bone Grinders are dismember Pow Ten Weapon Masters with yeah, Grievous. But against me, they're nothing. Yeah. So like this could be like a decent hordes drop. And then I could build a list to complement that. But instead of like, with it only being one list, I feel like I don't, I'm not incentivized to play Midas. Because we had talked about it after the game, I'm like, 
if I literally hot swap in Lord Azalo for Midas, the matchup is 100% way better because Lord Azalo's kit is just way better. Yeah, I think that we that's definitely something we've discussed is that there are just some casters that do not belong in this format. And it's not because they're too powerful, it's just that they don't do enough. So there's like you get this smaller stable of casters to choose from, so maybe that could like homogenize the format a little bit to where everybody's just running like their 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 really uh obvious drops for this, but someone like Midas is definitely not on that radar if you're just doing the one list thing. So like I get where you're coming from. I still like the purity of the one list format, even if it means that it's gonna gonna tilt it more towards certain selections but uh, i still think it's fun and i enjoy or i'm looking forward to seeing more updates from line of sight as things progress i think people are playing brawl machine more but at the risk of this going over for two hours i think we'll unplug for now and then we'll wait for the next brawl machine video to see if we both feel similarly again yeah we'll get some more reps in i just i don't like how with one list like you said some casters overshadow others but we'll talk about that later on